Live from the Subaru of Gwinnett studio at the beautiful Sinesta Gwinnett Place Atlanta Hotel, it's The Bottom Line with Jacqueline Sheldon on Business Radio X. Maximize your return on investment by reducing your tax bill. Get ready for the best tax talk you've ever had. It's The Bottom Line, presented by Bottom Line Tax Solutions. Hello, Jacqueline. Hi, Tom. How are you? I am doing well. How are you this afternoon? I am always fantastic. It's the holiday season. It is the holiday season. Are you excited? Not really. No? Nah. Bah. Humbug. <laughs> oh, great. Was your Thanksgiving well? <laughs> My Thanksgiving was awesome. I was surrounded by a bunch of in-laws. Uh-huh. Crazy and, uh, bunch. I had somebody smoke me a turkey. It was pretty good. Oh, I was smoking turkey. We should have gotten together. We should have. Darn. <laughs> no, but, Thanksgiving but, was great. But this magnificent time of the year is when we show appreciation for things, or at least we're supposed to. Uh, it's also when businesses can show appreciation to their employees or their customers. After all, they they say it's the most deductible time of the year. That is the name of the show, isn't it? It is. Okay. You know, we talked last month about you're in tax planning strategies and it's right. just it's amazing how many dollars business owners spend in december trying to get those last minute tax deductions in before the uh, new year comes along so we're going to talk about some deductions today that are fun yeah things fun that are, dedu- things nice that are deductions. related to the holidays nice gifts hosting parties holiday parties yeah, and all this the fun stuff that goes along with uh, the holidays so tell me about some of these things that are deductible Let's go with the fun stuff first. Okay. Well, let's uh, let's start with gifts. When you're looking at deducting gifts to customers, the IRS does have some limits there that you have to keep in mind. Gifts are deductible up to $25 per person per year. Now, that's assuming you're giving a gift to an individual. Per person. Per person. $25. Per year. So, yeah, you're really limited there. That's so not you, much money. It's not. So, if you go out and spend $30, $40 on a gift for an individual uh, customer... Uh, you're only going to be able to deduct 25 of that. And so that's for customers. That is, well, really for any individual. Even my employees? Well, we'll talk about employees that's here different. in a few minutes. This, so that's that's a my, bit co- my vendors, my customers, people I do business with. Exactly. I got you. That's, that's a little depressing. Yeah. Well, it's, it's not a lot, that's for sure. Uh, now, for the purpose of this limit, you don't have to include incidental costs, things like shipping of the of the item to you or gift wrapping or engraving or anything like that. You also don't have to include branded items, things that might have your company logo on it, pens, stress balls, coffee mugs, those kind of things that you give away. As long as they're widely distributed and cost less than $4 an item, you don't have to include those in that $25 per year limit. So if you've got a coffee mug that costs $5, you're in trouble? <laughs> well, the, Wow. <laughs> there you go. Wow. You've got, a, you've got an extra dollar there, I guess you got to deal well, with Well, you that. know, I, I take my some of my vendors out for, for the holidays and, and – you know, a table dance alone costs more than $25, okay. so well, there it you just go. blows the budget right oh, there. Yeah, well, yeah. yeah, I could see the IRS uh, asking some questions about that. They deduction. don't usually give you receipts for those, I just, uh, yeah. I, yeah, mm-hmm. and I know you got to keep good receipts. You do. That's something we have learned this yeah, year. That is true. Now, what about, uh, now that was for individuals, right? That's for individuals. So what if uh, we give gifts to companies? Like I, I make a giant gift basket. I, I spend 100 bucks on a gift basket. Well, the IRS does not set limits on gifts to companies. As long as the costs are reasonable and it's something sent to a company for all the employees to share, the IRS actually doesn't have a limit on those. So you do have a little leeway there on gifts to companies. That makes uh, sense. So as long as the employees are, are left to, to fight over it, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> the employees of that company, yeah, yeah, I can see what you're saying. Yeah, nice. something, something for the company employees to share, then, yeah, there's no limit on that. But now what if you buy stuff for your employees? I, I hear bosses buy stuff for their employees. I've always shied away from that. Yeah. I figure I figure that paycheck every two weeks is enough gift in some cases. Oh, okay, so you're, not, you're not big on holiday gifts for your employees. My, my employees don't know what a 40-hour work week is, so okay. just saying. But, yes, buying for employees, I, I digressed. I'm sorry. Okay, so generally anything of value that you give to an employee is considered compensation to that employee. So it has to be included in their taxable income. You have to process it through payroll, pay payroll taxes on it. So uh, that that can be, get a little sticky there. But then you are able to deduct the cost by doing so. There is an exception for non-cash gifts that are considered de minimis fringe benefits. Wow, that's a mouthful. That is a mouthful. Uh, these things are items of small value 
that are given infrequently, such as maybe a holiday turkey or a gift basket, something like that. Right. Uh, those don't have to be included in the employee's taxable income, and they're still deductible to the business owner. So a cash bonus is taxed. Ca- anything that's cash or cash equivalent. So if you give cash or you give gift cards, gift card same those as cash. things technically are considered compensation to that employee, and you have to include it in their so, payroll. So if you're that guy waiting for your Christmas bonus to put the pool in the backyard, yes, that's going to be taxed. Yes. Now, what if the boss man just built the pool for you? It's <laughs> still a gift. Would that be a gift? <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Um, but but now if 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 the company the what jelly of the month that's not taxed. Well yeah, I mean, assuming that you compared spend to the cash bonus a reasonable amount <laughs> on the jelly of the month club, then yeah, then you wouldn't necessarily have to put that in compensation. If, if you went from cash bonus to jelly of the month, uh, I imagine you're pretty cheap. But yeah, th- th- this sounds like a movie I've seen somewhere. Yeah, I think line. that's yeah. I think your family's into that movie somehow. Yeah. All right, so. Wow, where are we at? I totally lost my train of thought. Uh, the de, de minimis, de min, how do you say that? De minimis gift fringe benefits. How do you even say that? <laughs> is there a safe number on that? What is de minimis? Well, where, where do they come up with that to begin with? Well, it's minimal, basically. Is what oh, it means, minimal. So they're, so they're fancy. Yeah, that, that, yeah, it means minimal. I guess you're cheap if they say, hey, hey, here's a minimal gift. Exactly. But if you say, here's a de minimis gift, people, oh, I got something. <laughs> I never thought of it that way, but okay. <laughs> That's probably where it came from. Well, but back to tax law. Uh, the IRS, tax law, yes. The IRS doesn't set a limit on those items. De minimis. But yeah, I usually tell my clients $75 or less you can usually get away with without having to worry about it being uh, So three table dances. It would nice. be put nice. into compensation. Because what it, un- under $75, you really don't have to have a receipt to prove it. That's true. We've talked about that before, that if you get audited for anything that's less than $75, the IRS does not require a receipt, but you do have to require proof of payment. Proof of payment. You can't pay cash. I got you. I got you. So all you bosses out there, I don't know, what's good pearls of wisdom? Don't give cash bonuses? Well, yeah, just keep in mind if you give cash bonuses that there are payroll taxes involved, so just keep that, factor that into your your. You know, employee you know, giving budget, I guess. You know, and this will segue into our, our next little, uh, our next little topic. Uh, when when I did buy employees gifts, which I promise you was very rare, I just buy them balls of liquor. There again, that would probably work as long as it's under seventy five dollars. Yep. Awesome, awesome. So yeah, you, you probably did okay on those. So uh, t- since we brought up bottles of liquor, <laughs> like we do every week or every month. What about the holiday parties? Let's talk about something fun here. Uh, you have a big, wild blowout. People are are, are what doing uh, unspeakable activities and having a good time. And, and I don't know what kind of holiday, holiday parties you. Oh, go I've to been to get. some amazing holiday parties to end parties. Mm. Uh, are those all deductible? How do you deduct all that? Well, you know the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act reduced certain deductions that were related to business meals and also business entertainment. And if you remember, we talked about before the fact that business entertainment technically is no longer deductible under the new tax law. However, there are some exceptions to this rule and for certain recreational activities. And one of those happens to be holiday parties. Holiday parties are fully deductible if provided they're primarily for the benefit of non-highly compensated employees and their families. So, in other words, you have to include everyone. The minions. Well, yeah, pretty much. It can't just be just your upper-level management. Well, the upper level gets their own little private room, don't they? Yeah, I don't know about that. Oh, okay. Um, so, in that case, they're 100% deductible. It's 100%. not 50%. It's 100% deductible. The catering, the decorations. What mm-hmm. Now, what if you give gifts during that party is well, that is that cross back, a line then you go back to that gift rule what if it's what if it's uh, like just a drawing a blind drawing like a raffle or something you don't know who's getting it well yeah you know, there again I, that would be a deductible expense i would think as long as it's reasonable okay now if at your holiday party you include other people customers or vendors then your party will, becomes then only partially deductible. So to be 100% deductible, it just has to be for employees. If you include customers and vendors, and a lot of you know small businesses do, they, oh, yeah. they invite their customers or their vendors in for the holiday party, then you kind of have a, an accounting nightmare there to be able to segregate the cost between what was in for employees so and what was for other parties. people. Well, that, that could be one way to do it is to host two parties. But like a week apart, mm-hmm. not within the same week or same days or... I mean, there's a hangover to deal with. No, okay. You know, yeah. 
All right, moving right along. Sorry about that. <laughs> what other tips for deducting holiday parties? I mean, this this is something I assure you that either a lot of people take too much or they don't take enough as far as deductions, knowing where they stand, where they don't stand. Because I didn't realize if your customers were there with your employees, that 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 changes the whole scenario. Well, and it does, and that's really under the new tax law that that comes into play. Used so that to, just happened. In used last to year. with a holiday party, you could deduct 100 percent regardless. But um, with the business entertainment change, is where the change to the holiday party rule came in. Bunch of party Nazis. That's what mm-hmm. happened. Yeah, you know, it's the IRS. What do you what do you expect? Oh, sorry, did I just call them Nazis? I think you did. Wow. Uh, about the only other tip that I could give you is if you run your business as a corporation. S corp. S Corp or a C Corp, okay. you might want to consider hosting your business party at your house. Nice. You know, by doing that, your corporation can actually pay you to rent your home for the holiday party. And as long as your home is rented for less than 14 days total out of the year, you don't have to include that in your personal income. So your corporation gets to the deduction and it's not taxable to you personally as rental income. So you you do want to make sure that you pay yourself a fair rental rate for the use of your home. So you may want to scope out some other venues, some other locations. Well, you need to prove that it's fair, that it's not an excessive amount that you paid for the use of your home for the party. But it is a great way to get some tax-free income and an additional tax deduction before year end. You could lower your tax bracket. You will. I don't know about lowering your tax bracket, but it definitely would. Oh, my home would be very expensive to rent. (laughs) Let me tell you. We'll give you some extra money in your pocket to pay for those holiday gifts because, you know, you do have to send your accountant a gift this time of year. Do you really? You do. I don't even pay my accountant, <laughs> so I don't even know about any of that. Oh, my. Wow. Um, all right, well, we're going to take a, a quick break, and we're going to come back and talk about maybe a little 2020. And uh, I've got one other question to ask you. We'll get to that in a minute. Um, so, ladies and gentlemen, hang in there. I know the, the first segment was a little loose it's the holidays. We're just here to have a good time and cut up. And uh, I don't want to say get through it, but no, I'm just kidding. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll be right back. Are you paying too much in taxes? Who isn't? Taxes are the highest expense small businesses face. Maximize your return on investment. Reduce your tax bill. Tax planning and tax resolution strategies, the art of keeping more money you've worked hard for. Schedule your free tax planning consultation by visiting www.bottomlinetaxsolutions.com. That's bottomlinetaxsolutions.com. My small business had done well and thought I'd paid my taxes. Then I got a letter from the IRS. I didn't know what to do. So I called Bottom Line Tax Solutions. They understood exactly what I was going through. Bottom Line worked with me and for me. They turned a horrible time into a manageable one. Now I'm in a payment plan I can afford. And they were able to get my penalties reduced. Schedule your free tax planning consultation by visiting BottomLineTaxSolutions.com. 
All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are back for the second segment of The Bottom Line. The best tax talk you've ever had. Hello, Jacqueline. You're still with me? I am still you here. You haven't run screaming yet? Not yet, but I'm close. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah, I'll, I'll leave that where it's at. Right, we, the first segment, we were talking about buying gifts for employees, for customers, how they're deducted, how they're not deducted. And we, we got to some very important things like holiday parties, drunken wild holiday parties and writing all that off okay it's awesome it's awesome but there was one thing that uh, you know sitting around the old water cooler the other day someone made mention about a fifteen thousand dollar gift exclusion or something i don't necessarily know if he knew exactly what he was talking about but i knew you would know what he was talking about what is he talking about (laughs) okay uh the $15,000 gift exclusion, this has to do with gift taxes. You know, the IRS has several different types of taxes that it assesses for different things. Uh, there's income tax, which is what we've primarily talked about so far in the show today. But there's also gift tax and there's estate tax. This $15,000 estate. estate tax, estate. yes. Okay. Um, Sorry. There's the $15,000 gift exclusion has to do with gift taxes. An individual can give a gift of up to $15,000 a year to another individual and not have to pay gift tax. Anybody. Yes, they can give it to anybody that would like be to. Be a brother, to to. Mm-hmm. neighbor. Yeah, you see this a lot. Maybe Your favorite radio host. You, so, yeah, something like that. You see this a lot when uh, children grow up and maybe they're looking to buy their first house and their parents want to give them some money gift them some money to help them make that down payment that's really what it's talking about there so you can do up to fifteen thousand dollars per individual so you know a husband and wife could each do fifteen thousand dollars for their child and that could give them thirty thousand but but yes the fifteen thousand dollars the recipient does not pay taxes on that fifteen thousand dollars. No, whoever receives the gift is not taxable. That's where the exclusion is at. It's not taxable to them, and the person that's giving the gift doesn't have to pay gift tax on it. If you give more than fifteen thousand dollars in a year to someone, then you could potentially have a gift tax issue. Now, for most people, when you file a gift tax return, you can take that extra gift against your lifetime exclusion of your estate which means that you don't necessarily have to pay the gift tax on it, but it reduces your exclusion on your estate. So when you pass away, the amount that you don't have to pay tax on in that estate is reduced by the amount of uh, gifts that you gave over $15,000 like in a year. Problems again. Uh, yeah, it's, it's a little complicated, a little confusing, that's but, but that's what, what uh, he was talking but about now, there. Now, but the, give, the, the person who's giving the money, that 15000 is still... You still pay income tax on yes, that fifteen thousand dollar gift is not deductible, and I do hear that quite a bit. As a matter, I think that's where his confusion was at. I had uh, actually a client email me this week asking me that after one of our newsletters went out, can I give fifteen thousand dollars to my daughter and, to lower and, his tax bracket? Exactly. But it doesn't work that way, and and not have to pay tax on that money. And the answer to that is no. This right. is not anything to do with income taxes. Right. It has to do with gift taxes. A whole different tax, right? So the IRS considers that fifteen thousand dollar gift. Let's say you gave $15,000 to your child. They assume you paid tax on it right. when you earned it. So giving it to your child, your child does not have to pay tax on it. So, you know, But it could be anyone you know. It could be your neighbor. It, it could be anyone that you wanted to give a, a, a gift to. I guess. And usually, you know, gifting is part of your estate planning strategy you know, for people who, who are worried about estate taxes to be able to, over time, give gifts to family members, children, grandchildren, just to reduce the value of your estate. But, you know, now the gift, uh, the estate tax exclusion is over eleven million dollars. So most people, your average uh, taxpayer. Well, wow, you know what? I'm still just under it. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> your average taxpayer really doesn't have to worry quite so much about estate taxes as as they once did. Now, that's all part of the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act, which we've talked about before. It's supposed to expire in 2025, so the estate tax exclusion will probably go down at that point. Uh, but we'll, we'll see where things are, just depending on how things go. All right, well, it's almost Christmas. It is. And that means it's almost the end of the year. It's almost time to ring in the new year. Yeah. So then you can have a New Year's party. You know, I don't have those. <laughs> you don't? I consider New Year's Eve amateur night. Oh, uh, okay. I stay home. <laughs> in fact, I, I don't leave the root, uh, house for two days. I, <laughs> and No, seriously, it is amateur night. The 2020 will be here. Uh, I know over this year and last year, 
there have been major changes in in the tax code. All there that have. all that stuff you keep up with how I how I don't know. Uh, what do you foresee? You look into the the Jackie Crystal Ball. Well, or I don't. It could be a tequila bottle. I don't care. I don't foresee there being any major tax changes in 2020. Like you said, the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act, which... You know, Ladies and gentlemen, you heard it here. No major changes in 2020. <laughs> yeah, please don't hold me to that. I, I don't foresee any major changes. Uh, because everything's working so great. Well, the Tax Cut and Jobs Act was a major piece of tax reform. It's the biggest piece of tax legislation to be passed in over 30 years. So it, it was a major tax reform. I don't see the IRS... Not a lot of reason to change it. Yeah. I Again. Don't, I don't see Congress is making a, a change in that at least in the short term so it's going to stay the same you're thinking yeah pretty much the same now you will have your normal increases due to cost of living well, cost of adju- living inflation things like that Absolutely. so you know, your standard deduction will go up by a couple hundred dollars depending on your filing status because the economy is booming and doing some different unemployment things. is nothing right so, basically yeah so no major changes are coming up not, not that we're aware of. Now we do have an election year coming up, obviously. But it just, it just w- when you say all that, and, and I hear you saying no major changes, no reason to change anything, I hear that America has been made great again. <laughs> That's what I hear. Uh-huh. I figured you'd get that in somewhere I'm before the day I'm working on it. I've been over. waiting a, a year to get that in. Okay. Well, and, you know, with it being an election year, a lot's going to depend on what happens next year for the elections. Um, depending on who's in power, there may be some major changes that come up after that. Of course, that doesn't come into 2021 when a new president could potentially right, take versus, office. Versus 21. Uh, so we'll have to see what happens with the election. It could, it, it could make a big change. The Tax Cuts and Jobs Act, as I mentioned earlier, is, is set to expire after 2025. Right. But it, we could have some changes so well before that. Vice President Pence will be president by then, or probably. Mm, well, we'll, we'll have to see on that. Now, as far as changes for businesses, there again, there's not any real major changes there. There is one thing, though, that came along this year that has to do with uh, health reimbursement plans. We talked about you know, different kinds of uh, health care reimbursement plans this year. There was a new tax law that was passed back in June that it increases the flexibility of reimbursing health care costs for employees through what's now called an individual coverage HRA. Or what? An individual coverage HRA, or it's called an ICHERA for short. ICHERA. Um, Something you need to get a shot of penicillin for. It sounds like it, but you know, most most small business owners, um, you know, if they do any kind of health care reimbursement, they may want to check out this new law because you have some more flexibility on what you can do there. When Obamacare was passed, the ability to reimburse health insurance and health care costs was dramatically changed. Right. And it got very strict on what an employer could and couldn't do. And then over the last couple of years, that has relaxed a little bit. And with this new ICHERA, uh, type health care reimbursement arrangement is relaxed it a little bit more. And that starts next year. Uh, that starts for 2020. So if you gotcha. are a small employer that is looking to reimburse health care costs, individual policies, or maybe even health care expenses, you may want to check this out because it, it, it's definitely a, a better option for small business owners. That makes sense. Flexibility is always good. It's always it good. Sounds to me like we're just keeping America great. Okay. We yeah, are. it works. It works. Wow. We've done this for 12 months. It has. They haven't kicked me off the radio yet? Not yet, but after today, it may be a little bit. I guess the internet. This is internet radio. Yeah. You want to you want to say uh, goodbye to everyone, or how do you how do you want to do this? I, I'm I'm about to start weeping. I'm afraid. <laughs> well, you know, we've had a great time this year here on the Bottom Line. We've covered a lot of topics, everything from tax planning we to have. tax problem solving, uh, health insurance, mortgages, and retirement solutions. Uh, I've I think, first of all, we probably ought to say thank you to the guests who have joined yeah, us on our guests. show this That's year. Right. That's right. Uh, Candy Hilliard with American Family I Protectors. Know her. Yes, she I came know. in and talked to us about health insurance and how all that works and as far as your taxes are concerned and what employers can do for health insurance for their employees. Yep. We had, uh, oh, what was that guy's name? Stephen Julian, that guy. We had yeah. him come in. Yeah, Stephen came in and talked about retirement planning and how that affects your taxes. And yeah, We talked about wins casinos. You did. And bottles of liquor. It seems to be a recurring theme. It seems to be for you, anyway. Uh, Stephen was awesome. Stephen was awesome. I call him Julian, but not everyone can get by Did a great job. Uh, Chan Roach with North Point Mortgage. She came She's in an angel. And talked to us about the mortgage changes, uh, and we talked a little bit about how those things affect your tax returns. She's a North Point Mortgage. North Point Mortgage, and she is awesome. Now, actually, Chan serves on a board with you and I, and I'm something opposite or separate from the radio show. We serve on a board together, and... and 
we always say she is the true calming voice. She <laughs> the is. The calming force for, for of our, that board. <laughs> yeah, and that she definitely is. She, she, she's an amazing person. Um, someone that I've known just about all my life. So yeah, Actually, you have. Yeah, and then your gal pal, Sandy Hill, was here. Yeah, Sandy Hill with Fairway Independent Mortgage. She came in on our show when we were talking about uh, investment real estate and rental properties. That's, that's and, her game, yeah. And, and talked to us a little bit about mortgages uh, for investment properties and what you need to know when it comes to financing those. So we've had some great guests this year. I just want to take a moment to say thank you to everybody who's come in this year and uh, joined us here on The Bottom Line. Yeah, I invited them all to join us for the last last episode, and I just I mm. never got any responses. I don't know what that meant. <laughs> wow. Oh, maybe. Did we pay them? Uh, no. Oh, okay. That may be why. Am I getting paid? No. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> okay. What else you want to talk about? Well, you know, I guess if there's one thing that I would want to go back to that we've talked about this year, we've covered, like I said, a lot of different topics, had some great guests on here. But if there, there's one thing that I would want to go back to, it's the importance of being proactive when it comes to, to your taxes. Um, tax planning. Tax planning. You know, we've, ta- said, we've talked a lot about it this year, and I don't think I can stress it enough that failing to plan is planning to fail planning to fail you finally got it it took you 12 months but you finally got it it's written in, it's written right here in front of me in giant bold letters so I, I really couldn't miss it i'm surprised i didn't say it right at the beginning of the show exactly and then other than that you know we're coming up on a new year so you know new year's always the time people set new year's hit resolutions the you know, go they, hit the gym they want to they want to you know improve things so I would say for business owners, it's a good time to look at your record-keeping system to make sure you have good systems in place, that you're tracking your income and expenses, you're tracking your business mileage, you have a good record-keeping system in place so that you not only make sure you don't miss any deductions because you didn't keep good records, but also you're prepared in case of audit. Uh, So for 2020, New Year coming up, it's a good time started the new year to make sure that you have a good record keeping system in place now this may be the last episode of the bottom line with Jacqueline Sheldon but this is hardly the last episode of Jacqueline Sheldon where do the folks find you um, you can give our office a call and our office is in Sugar Hill and that number is 678-866-4047 or you can visit our website which is bottomlineGA. It's in Georgia, bottomlineGA.com. BottomlineGA.com. And you'll, you'll, in 2020, you will be doing, uh, what, talks, workshops, help me on this, classes. Yeah. Uh, I hesitate to call them classes. They're more like talks, but for for small business owners. And you'll be doing some trade shows, I believe. Right. We'll be doing some trade shows. Uh, we're also... Uh, at Neymar, we'll be doing several classes uh, for real estate agents you know, there. What was Neymar again? Uh, the North American. <laughs> Nor- <laughs> North Atlanta. North Atlanta. Metro. <laughs> I don't know what it is. You just hit me on the Realtor. spot. V- Realtor Group. Association. Wow. They hate us now. <laughs> yeah, no, you know that. I really, I just totally butchered that it's one. It's Neymar. It's Neymar. Yeah, I don't ever think of what the acronym stands for, but uh, it's the Realtor Board here in Duluth. Uh, so we've met over the last year a we've, lot we've of done a few few uh, awesome, workshops there yeah we've met some good, awesome good real estate agents and uh, so we're we're looking forward to doing that again in 2020 i want to give a shout out to the the amazing mike salmond yay uh, here at business radio x and mike is awesome who who has put up with me and, and us me more so <laughs> I, I hear either shuffling cards or clapping i don't know um, and, and and i know the intro says the beautiful uh subaru of gwinnett Atlanta studio and it is beautiful yes. everyone here has been very wonderful yes this has been a fun experience I I've, have to say I've enjoyed it and uh, I'm going to give a shameless plug because it's, it's near and dear to both our hearts for those of you in in the North Gwinnett area check out the Sugar Hill Business Alliance at sugarhillbusinessalliance.com I'm the president you're actually the treasurer imagine that uh, we spend a lot of time with the city of Sugar Hill and we have an awesome business alliance we do so it's check a, out the website it's a great group of people there i got that in it took 12 months okay awesome i guess that's about it jacqueline i guess it is this has definitely been the best best tax tax talk i'm choking up I, I'm, I'm about to cry folks this has been the best tax talk anyone has ever had i'm tom she's jacqueline and that's the bottom line Thank you for sharing your time with us on Business Radio X. 
Schedule your free tax planning consultation by visiting www.bottomlinetaxsolutions.com. That's bottomlinetaxsolutions.com. And click the link to hear more podcasts like this one. I'm Tom. She's Jacqueline. And that's the bottom line.